welcome dear students so this is the next video lecture today we will discuss schrodinger's equation okay schrodinger's equation we will just uh, go into the analytical dis discussion of this equation we will not go into the mathematical part because uh, to understand schrodinger's equation completely we need higher mathematics okay which is not in our plus 2 syllabus which is not there in our plus 2 syllabus so schrodinger equation to i mean just upore upore alop sabole try korim ami bujibole chesta korim schrodinger equation to ki hoy iman detailed study schrodinger equation or na lage ঠিক আছে শর্ডিঙ্গার ইকুয়েশন বেসিক্যালি আমি টাইম ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট ইকুয়েশন আছে শর্ডিঙ্গারের একটা টাইম ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট ইকুয়েশন আছে আমি সেইটো চাম টাইম ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট ইকুয়েশনটো শর্ডিঙ্গারও কেনেকুৱা ই সাই ইজ ইকুয়াল টু এইচ সাই দিস ইজ প্রোনাউন্স এজ সাই সাই ইটস এ গ্রিক আলফাবেট সরি রোমান আলফাবেট সাই so e has a cap h has a cap so e is energy operator h is hamiltonian mathematical operator hamiltonian it's hamiltonian you guys are not familiar uh, familiar with hamiltonian or energy operator so and there's no need to you know uh, know these things i'll just tell you few things about this equation first of all this equation is a differential equation okay it's a differential equation okay so in your basic physics class you must have uh, heard about differential equation differential equation is something like you know uh, it's like in the form of suppose dy by dx plus ax equal to 0 suppose this this is called first order differential equation then if any equation like this this is a very famous equation very very uh, you know <coughs> common in physics syllabus it's a motion of any particle executing you know oscillation okay oscillatory motion is simple simple harmonic motion okay uh, so it's a second order differential equation so in the same fashion this equation is you know uh, a second order differential equation okay where e is energy operator e is energy operator h is hamiltonian and now the main thing is what is psi what is this psi so this psi is called wave function the psi is called wave function okay so we will mainly discuss about this psi okay wave function what is wave function okay so now see uh if you don't know what is mathematical operator then suppose plus addition addition is also a operator okay suppose we have a uh, operation plus then it means we have to add a and b okay that means this symbol this symbol plus means it operates in a way that it adds the two number okay so, uh, so operators are like that only okay so they perform a particular uh, they perform a particular you know uh, mathematical operation on the given function okay so it's certain kind of thing psi is wave function now what is wave function okay so in order to know that actually we first go let's let's first see that how we derive this equation 
So first of all, what we do, we consider electron to be a stationary wave, okay, stationary wave. Now we have two type of wave, I have told you, one wave is something this wave is traveling, okay, and suppose I have a string, string attached to two ends, the, st the two ends of the strings are attached on the wall, if I vibrate this string, I will get waves like this. It will vibrate like this okay isn't it the string will vibrate like this okay so this is vibration of a stretch stretched string so this uh, uh, string produces a vibration but the vibration does not move okay does not move it's stationary between these two points okay it does not move in this in space okay so that means it's a stationary wave. Sim in similar way, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So we know that we have orbits. We have imagined orbits in our you know atom. That there are orbits and electrons are moving. Electrons are moving in circular orbit. Okay. Now suppose if I consider electron to be a wave, then electron may go like this. And ultimately I see that electron starts here and ends here that means it has no the final displacement of this electron is zero there is no displacement that means it will behave as a stationary wave okay it has no uh, ultimately there is no displacement so it has a you know it can be considered as stationary wave. so considering electron to be a stationary wave okay okay pi pi lambda into omega t okay so what we can do we can you know uh, derive this this is a wave you know, wave considering wave okay so we can derive this equation and finally it will reach you know e psi equal to h psi and psi psi wave function is something related to x y z and t okay that means space time okay space and time that means at particular time uh, the location of the wave okay and see psi the value of psi okay when we will solve this uh, schrodinger's equation we will get the value of psi most of the time uh, it can be real but the main thing is sometimes it can be imaginary imaginary okay now what is imaginary have you studied complex number I'm not sure whether you know complex number but I is equal to root minus 1 okay we know that root of 1 is what root of 1 is 1 okay we generally uh, you know determine square root of positive numbers like suppose if I have I have root 4 then it could be plus minus 2 plus minus 2 that means if you if you apply squaring to minus 2 it gives you 4 and if you apply to plus 2 it gives you 4 similarly here we will get plus minus 1 okay that means square root is just the reverse of squaring okay but now suppose I have root of minus 1 now if you square <coughs> if you square any number what is the you know what is the uh, concept behind a square square means multiplying a number with the same number multiplying number with the same number so if one number is negative then another number is also negative so it always gives you a positive number in, in both the cases now suppose if I have a negative number suppose I have a negative number 
in a fact and if i take square root now how will you define square root of a negative number okay so that's why it's called imaginary okay it's called imaginary and i is defined as root over minus 1 that means if i is suppose if i have root over a uh, minus 4 then i can write it root over minus 1 into root over 4 that means root over minus 1 and this is supposed to and i will get you know 2 i okay and if i take this plus minus 2 then you can just get plus minus twice 2 i okay plus minus 2 i so instead of root minus 1 i have written i this is called imaginary number okay and we when we combine an imaginary number with a real number that means suppose 2 2 is a real number and suppose i and 3 or 3 i okay if you write 3 i 3 i means 3 into root minus 1 okay so 3 i now this number is known as complex number we call it a complex number okay we call it a complex number that means any number any number which is in form of a plus i b is called a complex number okay so when we solve psi we get complex values for psi the solution of psi is complex so generally psi has no physical significance why psi has no physical significance because the solution is complex in nature it's imaginary it's imaginary in nature okay so that's why the solution of psi the solution of e psi h psi so the value of psi that we get has no real significance that if it has no real significance then what we should do okay then we will uh, you know apply a mathematical equation that we usually do for you know uh, imaginary numbers and that's called we will take square of the modulus now what is modulus of psi the modulus of psi is the magnitude of psi and it is defined as root over a square plus b square that means i vanishes using this modulus operation we can you know we are taking the real part of this value okay from this complex number so psi square will give you what a square plus b square which is real in uh, nature so psi square has a significance then we can also do this psi into psi star okay now what is psi star then suppose if psi is a plus ib then psi star is a minus ib this is called conjugate okay or companion conjugate or companion this is conjugate of psi psi star is conjugate of psi as uh, psi so if it is a plus ib then this is a minus ib and if you see if you multiply if you multiply psi with psi star what you will get a plus ib a minus ib so what you get you get a square minus i square b square so a square what i told you about i i was root under minus 1 so what is i square i square will be minus 1 so you get a square plus b square so multiplying a complex number with its conjugate gives you a real number again that's why we can do this operation also this is also a real value okay so you can take modulus or you can take you know psi into psi star and then the psi has a real value and it has a significance now see what it signifies what it tells us okay so what it will tell us now see before coming to this uh, schrodinger's equation we studied two things one de broglie's equation and heisenberg's uncertainty principle so i have told you that i have considered electron as a stationary wave that means 
I have already used one of the concept that is de Broglie equation that means dual nature okay I considered electron as a wave okay so since I considered electron as a wave that is I have used one equation that is that duality now I will use the second equation that means Heisenberg's uncertainty principle we will try to you know uh, put it somewhere so how will put it uh, here in this equation now see the psi square that I'm talking about this psi square that I'm talking about this psi square what does it signify it gives us the probability of finding an electron in an atom. That means the value of psi square and since psi square I, I, I told you that psi is a function of x, y, z and t okay space time so what psi uh, the value of psi square tells us it tells us just the probability it will not tell us exactly where the electron is okay just keep in your mind that in subatomic world there is nothing fixed there is nothing certain the only certainty is uncertainty the only certainty is uncertainty or probability so we can just get probabilities the probability may rise you know it can be you know as high as 99 percent but it's not 100 percent okay it cannot be 100 percent that means it cannot be 100 percent certain any value value is not 100 percent certain it can be 99 percent certain okay and uh, I will tell you one thing about probability okay that means uh, how you know some uh, something is more probable and less probable which outcome is because we must understand this probability concept okay so just first keep in mind that psi square just gives us the probability okay the probability of finding an electron in an atom that where an electron could be okay not where it is okay it's not certain it's just a probable now see suppose we have uh, you know we have two dice two dice okay two dice you know ludo the dice with, uh, with which we play ludo and you know we throw the dice okay you are throwing dice randomly okay now see what we will do after throwing the dice we will add the two numbers on the dice okay so suppose outcome can uh, can come to the addition can come can come to and how addition can come to so the only way we can get two is one plus one that is both the dice has one one okay now one another outcome is three so what are the possibilities the possibilities first dice one second dice two or first dice two second dice one four so first dice one second dice three three one two two for five we get one four four one two three three two okay then we have six so one five five one then two four four two three three then I'll get probability 7 so 1 plus 6 6 plus 1 then 2 plus you know 1 plus 5 uh, 2 plus 5 5 plus 2 3 plus 4 
4 plus 3. If you take 8, 2 plus 6, 6 plus 2, then 4 plus 3 plus 5, 5 plus 3 and 4 plus 4. In this way you can see that it you know rises like this and then it will fall like this. It will rise like this and then it will fall like this. this. That means this is, this is called probability distribution curve. So you see that it's not certain that we'll, we'll get addition as 2. Okay, it's, it's not sure. It may come 2, it may come 7. But this, con this curve, this, this distribution curve tells us that the probability of this outcome, 7, is highest. Okay? This is, and you know, in physics syllabus, you'll get, you know, these curves on regular intervals. This is called maxwell boltzmann distribution curve. Okay? And you will get these curves in physics, you know, uh, in gaseous state, you'll get these uh, distributions. And these are all probability distribution curves. Okay? So that means, uh, this curve doesn't mean that it behaves like, it, it gives you certain areas, okay, where the probability is highest or uh, the number of molecules showing that kind of speed and you'll, uh, you'll study these things in detail. But see, what, what does this distribution curve tells us? It tells us that if I throw the dice, you know, randomly, the most probable outcome is 7, okay, the addition can, you know, uh, the addition will show up to be 7, it has the highest chances, but it's not the only chance, okay, it's not the only outcome that can happen, okay, it, it can be 2 sometime, well, the probability is very low, but it's not, but it's not 0, okay, so, uh, this is what, you know, our wave function tells us okay the wave function that we are talking about in Schrodinger's equation the psi square the value of psi square exactly tells us uh, something like this okay it will just give us an idea that suppose suppose this is my uh, nucleus okay and suppose as I start moving from the nucleus away okay it, the psi square will just tell me that in any region, suppose I cut out this region, it has some value of x, y, z, t, okay. In space time, it has certain coordinates, certain values. So, psi square will just tell me that what is the probability that electron can be here, you know, in this area. What is the probability, okay. It can be, it can be almost, you know, nearly zero. It can be nearly zero. It can be nearly hundred, but not exactly hundred or not exactly zero. Okay, we have already seen from Heisenberg that it cannot be certain. You cannot be certain for anything. Okay, not exact value, but we will get a probability. Okay, so I hope you have understand the basic significance of psi square. So psi square, uh, that means. Uh, the square of this wave function, what it tells us, it just gives us the probability of finding an electron in an atom, okay. So since uh, this, these conceptions are a bit uh, complex, okay, I, I'll just stop this video here and uh, I'll suggest you to study your NCRT textbook, okay. I I am concluding this video, you know, uh, in a short time, just just uh, because I'm allowing you to study these things. You know, the probability concept, the uncertainty concept is very new to you, okay. So it may take some time to grasp these ideas because uh, till this date you have dealt with any situation which is which is. 100% sure or 100% certain you have not seen situations where things are things are uncertain okay so once you get this idea in the next video lecture what we will do we will try few you know distribution curves we will see how probability changes okay and then we will you know discuss our final atomic model that is called electronic configuration 
ओके थैंक यू